What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl, April. So, you already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's time for real talk, bitches. Like, real talk. So, we're going to real talk together. We're going to talk about some shit. I'm going to do my... I'm going to do... Oh! I'm going to attempt to do... I'm going to attempt to do my makeup. Well, some of it. Yeah, I'm going to show y'all some stuff in this video that I'm using. Nothing like really high end. Um, yeah, because I'm a cheap ass bitch. But I already, um, I love this stuff. This is by Dollface. It's just like a brand, but I've been using this for like months. And I have showed you guys this. I love this. So now I have their um, peel away mask. OMG, like I like to put masks on my face. Last night I tried this mask. Um, it was a retinal mask, um, and it was from the Dollar Tree. So it was one of those fiber masks that you just pull out the pouch, right? And it came two of them in a pack from the Dollar Tree. Me and Mumsy, we did our video and then we wanted to use it, right? It was a it was for anti-aging, no wrinkles or whatever. And it was um by um oh my gosh. Um I had to let me show y'all. So it's by this brand called Global Beauty Care, and it's a retinal mask. So we, I found this, of course, right in the, you know, the makeup section, and it has two facial treatments. It's by this brand. I apologize about the, the light. Well, because I, I can't really control that because it's the sunlight, so I really can't control it. But um, this is it right here. In case you guys are interested. So you know how it has the pouches and you just pull them out. You know what I mean? The mask. Like I have a millions of these. A millions of these little facial mask stuff, right? But they are never two for a dollar. They'll be like a dollar. Why am I fucking yelling? They're like a dollar depending on where you get them. Like I like to get them like from a shop, Miss A, because they be a dollar, right? But a lot of times they be sold out. And if you go to the store, you'll find like the same exact one for like um two dollars three dollars like i've seen them like the cheapest i've ever seen them um like in the store has been like two dollars you know what i'm saying and i don't know but i'm so cheap like i really do like to get more than two for two dollars because i know i can get them for a dollar each so anyway when i see those i was like oh snap Oh, snap a duty. These are, um, you get two for a dollar. All right, bet. So we used it last night because we had did the video and we used it last night. Let me tell y'all something. Like a lot of stuff is really good at the Dollar Tree, but that mask. So you know how like the mask, they always have their wet when they come out. Some of them are not as wet. This retinal mask was so wet. Like it has so much whatever it was inside of it that um it was dripping off of the paper the, the fiber mask it kind of grossed me out because it was so like gooey it wasn't water but whatever it is that they use it was very gooey so you had to keep it on your face for like 15 15 or 20 minutes which okay mumsy was like i'm done after like five minutes she didn't want to keep it on her face because she was like it was too wet and she just didn't like the feeling of it i kept it on for like 20 minutes and normally when you do those fiber masks you um the excess moisture that's left from the mask once you take it off your face you'll just you know i just rub it into my face and it'll dry within like a couple of seconds it's really not a lot to let to, to moist to um, rub in your face but whatever's left i'll you know i'll rub it in my face i'm trying to get my money's worth Girl, let me tell y'all, there was so much stuff left from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that <laughs> it would have took like forever to dry. Like seriously, like I had to go and wash it off because it was so much. So my experience with that mask, it was a good experience. Like you get two masks. And they're in separate pouches, so it's not like the same pouch. You know what I'm saying? You get two pouches for a dollar. For a dollar. Make me holler, like me and Mumsy always say. 
and i'm saying no so if you guys see that at the dollar tree definitely pick it up i don't know if there's any other ones because listen if y'all looking for other ones then bitches i'm i can't help you with that that's what the fuck i found but you know they got facial wipes too um i think you get like 30 facial wipes for a dollar um the facial wipes is okay they're a little on the thin side me personally i i've been using these because i got lucky and i found like two at every freaking store that i went to and i have enough but i only have like two more packs left those come with 32 also but normally what i do i do for a dollar because i'm not about to spend a dollar for no 30 wipes i'll go and i'll buy like the pampers brand like the baby pampers i'll buy their sensitive facial wipes and you'll get like um 72 or 96 for like a dollar 50 because i always find a coupon and i like those better because you only need to use one and that one will um take off all your makeup including your eye makeup and also it'll um it's more moist like I noticed with these like these dry up super fast like really fast to me they dry out fast like when you're using them they just dry out really really fast so I don't really like that that, that Bolero brand as much like they're soft but they just dry out really fast so if you definitely are looking for like um I'm just dropping everything Oh my God, hold on guys. This is why I don't like to I always be unprepared. So first of all, the hair that I'm rocking today is that um, it was a U-part wig that was sent to me by her given hair. And then they sent me a closure to sew in the wig. But the, the U-part opening was too small. And I really didn't feel like doing no U-part. So I made it into half wig. I had to cut it. So I wore it like this today with this cute little headband. I got three of these in a pack for a dollar from the Dollar Tree. This is the um, Goody Brands, okay? The Goody Brands. I've seen the same headband at Fry's Grocery Store for like $5.99 for three of them. Like, bitch, please. So I finally fixed my brows because I know y'all, I told y'all I was going to leave them. I didn't go get them done. I just tweezed them right here because... I didn't feel like getting them done. This one is jacked up right here. I'm going to fix that. Um, I just didn't feel like getting them done. So anyway, other than that, let me tell y'all. My week has been cool. It's extra hot out here. It is. Let me tell y'all something. It's motherfucking 100. It has been like 120, 119 degrees out this motherfucker. And I'm sorry, but a bitch like me has really been staying in the house I don't want to fucking be friends with nobody right now. I don't want to fucking go nowhere with nobody right now. I don't even want to talk to nobody. Like, seriously, it's so hot that it has me miserable. And tis the season is not time for fuckery. So if you want to do some dumb shit and fucks with me, please don't. Because it's too motherfucking hot for all of that shit. So, yeah, it's too hot. Oh, like I was telling you guys, so I was using their doll face mask. And it's a peel away mask. Like, I like it. But I'm so used to those fiber masks that this shit took me like 10 minutes to peel off. Like, it doesn't even peel off that easy. It just breaks apart. You got to constantly keep peeling at it. But it's good. It did have my skin tight, and it did make my skin look brighter and clean. But, you know, I, that's just with any peel-away mask. I'm not, like, a huge fan of them. That's why I always get the fiber mask. But this is not the black one. It's clear. But they have some really good products. Like, they got a bunch of products i will definitely list um them below um i got these actually for free from this website where you can get a whole bunch of stuff for free you know what i'm saying you if you do videos or instagram or whatever you can get free stuff so i'll definitely post that this is where i actually got that from it's called octoly i also got this this is the new kiss contouring palette in the color medium dark so i'm gonna just use this i used this yesterday since the cream contour i used this yesterday like i can't do highlights with it because it's not light enough but i could like do my brows and a little bit of contouring or whatever but yes yeah, i'm trying to like do highlighting girls it's not working but it is really good it's cheap you know what i'm saying for those who want a budget it's cheap look like my grandson has stuck his little finger up in here mm. but it's cheap and it's cream i'm not like a huge fan of cream 
but it does cover the brow area nicely so anyway let me tell you so it's so freaking hot out there it's super hot and I'm just not with all the fuckery so like promised I did post up the video last week on my weight loss journey and telling you guys explaining to you guys what I've been using like and I've been using these hydroxy cut pills now this is a bigger bottle for 150 normally I'll get like the bottle that has 60 sometimes you'll get lucky to have 72 sometimes you'll get even luckier and have 90 but 90 but I always get it from like Walmart or the grocery store if I get it from the grocery store sometimes buy one get one free but it's always 20 bucks so as I posted the video you know what I'm saying I had informed people this is what I use and that it's not a sponsored video because it's not they didn't send me shit however I wish motherfucking hydroxy cut would send me some shit at least give me some free shit okay be talking about this and it's all I use but anyway so this is what I use and I'm gonna be honest and tell you guys I don't exercise like that I got a gym membership but I bet you use that shit to go to the motherfucking pool I got four kids that live with me and a grandson so listen I don't have no pool in my motherfucking backyard so, and if I did, I probably would have that shit all drained the fuck out. Because that shit is not cheap to have out here. Uh, having a pool is not cheap. So, the the um the gym that I go to is really, really nice. Who the fuck is texting me? Uh, this lady done really just pissed me off. She's gonna say she's... <sighs> okay, so, you know, I wish they would fucking sponsor me. Or fucking send me some free pills. So anyway, as I was doing the video, okay, as I was saying, but I kept getting um freaking interrupted by my son because he starts his new job today. And let me tell y'all, did he have me driving all over the place this morning for an orange shirt? It wasn't like an orange t-shirt like people wear, like you know, like a fluorescent orange. It was a polo style orange shirt, you know, little collar, three or four buttons. And you can't like find those just anywhere. We went to Walmart, we went to Target, we went to Sportsman's World, we went to Barnyard Boots where they sell work gear. We went to, just put it plain and simple, we went to a whole bunch of shit. So then we go to Tanger Outlets, okay? And Tanger Outlets just got outlets. So he, he calls the Tommy Hilfiger store first. Because it's like, all right, this was my last resort. They had, they had one. It was fifty bucks, but after the discounts and the savings, I only paid twenty seven dollars for it after taxes. I really would have liked to pay five. So this was early this morning, and mind you, I have been out since eight o'clock because I had to bring Mumsy to school, not to school, excuse me, um, to her program. They have this program at her school where. It's only for three weeks, but it'll help them, like, learn more stuff. It gets them prepared for, like, the next year or whatever. So she wanted to um, sign up for it. It's only for three weeks, and it's only, like, three days out the week. She wanted to sign up for it, and so she could do, like, science, and they do projects with them and stuff. So it's basically, like, for them to do projects and stuff, give them something to do. All right? So, and not every grade could do it. So I dropped her off. And um, then I was with Wuzzle, and um, we didn't get back until like 11.25. Now, mind you, I had to pick up Mumsy at 11.50. It's right there down the street in my house. So we get the orange shirt, blah, blah, blah. I tried to get some gas. I'm trying to get gas at the gas station because I'm on E. Soon as I finish paying for it and pulling the nozzle out, all the gas just flies out. It won't stop flying out all over the place. I had to throw the nozzles down. Somebody then stuck something up in the trigger thing to make all the gas just come out as soon as you pull it out. Some guy tried to run to my rescue. He slipped and fell in it. It's all over me. I should motherfucking sue their asses, okay? I had to hurry up and come home and take a quick shower before I got mums because I smelled like gasoline. But anyway, so... I did all of this this morning. Did this boy just tell me that the lady done pissed him off at the job and that it wasn't orange, it's fucking green? How's she gonna piss you off? Maybe you should pay the motherfucker attention all the time. How the fuck she gonna piss you off? Because he was like, I could have sworn she said green. She told me green. Even his friend that been working there was like, nobody wears orange, it's green. Always trying, 
the, the youth, the youth today always trying to blame some other fucking body for their mistakes and mishaps. So he want to, why am I doing this? He want to blame the motherfucking lady for the bullshit that he done fucking got all wrong. Like, okay, really? Like, did you just fuck up my morning? Had me running around town like a fucking banshee with their head cut off, looking for a shirt that you really didn't motherfucking need. And I could have spent five dollars on it. So now, before you go to work, because this is your first motherfucking day, what the fuck y'all think a bitch got to do? I got to take that orange shirt back to Tommy Hilfiger and get a green one. He's like, well, maybe we could just find a cheaper one. Listen, I done already spent my money at Tommy Hilfiger. Now I'm, I'm not going to get it back. I'm going to have to wait like a week for it to go back on my credit card. And then I'm going to have to go spend more money. Like, And then look, go find one. No, they got that shirt there. I'm not driving nowhere the fuck else. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so like I was saying, that's what just cut me the fuck off and just pissed me off. But um, So, yeah, I'm using this palette right here. Um, to me, it's good. It's great coverage, but um, it might look a little bit oily if your skin is oily. Like, I wouldn't use this on my entire face, especially if you have oily skin, because it's oily to me, and I have oily skin. So I definitely, me, the type of person, I would not use this all over my face. Then they sent me this, which is by um, Real Techniques. This is my favorite sponge from Real Techniques, but they got this little mini one. It's like a miracle sponge, whatever. The the five, the sponge texture is different. Like it's it feels totally different. So I like it, but I like the orange one the best. So anyway, like I was saying about the hydroxy cut, okay. Um, I did the video like as promised, and I explained in the video how it could cause and affect other people, how some people's side effects might be different from others. Basically, if you got, like, if you're leery about it, if you have high blood pressure or whatever, then consult your physician before you take it. Because a lot of people I noticed that have, like, high blood pressure and shit like that, they can't be taking all those type of, like, diet pills and shit. It's not good for them. So, I was just saying it, and I was, you know, and I was just like, you know, I don't exercise, but this helps me because it boosts your metabolism, you know, and I let people know how it works or whatever. Did some fucking bitch talk about no shade? I'm not hating or nothing. I normally don't fucking comment, but basically she was like disappointed in me because I um, was promoting that and how it's a sponsored video. Where the fuck did you hear sponsored from? In no way, shape, or form did I say that shit was sponsored. If it was, I would have said that. I buy the shit, okay? I said in the video, I wish a motherfucker would send me some shit for free. I wish they would. Shit, I fucking talk about the shit all the fucking time. I'm pretty sure Hydroxy Cut don't need little old me, April of YouTube, that really ain't nobody fucking sponsoring me and promoting their shit. They got a million people in the whole world. That shit is number one seller in America. I don't think they need no motherfucking YouTuber to sponsor their shit or to promote their shit. I'm just saying. But the shit that I'm really trying to get to the point is I hate when motherfucking people don't pay attention. Okay, they don't fucking pay attention just because I like something and I use it bitch Please don't think that that shit is sponsored. I could like a motherfucking diet pill. All right, you know what I'm saying? I could like that shit if I want to like it and I use it and it works for me because it helped me lose motherfucking weight Then I'm sorry. I motherfucking like it and if your fucking ass didn't lose no weight off the bitch Don't get motherfucking mad with me. Try something that works for your ass Bottom line, try something that work for you. People always got to say some smart shit. Then, you know, in the video, I was drinking a frappy from McDonald's. Of course, it had a straw because it is from McDonald's. Did the next motherfucker say <laughs> something basically about, oh, if, if, if she was me with her new veneers, she would be dipping them in a frappy from McDonald's with all that sugar. First of all, they're not veneers, they're crowns, okay? And second of all, how the fuck am I dipping my motherfucking teeth in a frappy if I'm sucking it out of a fucking straw? 
all right? People always so quick to say some shit about other people and always judge other people. This is the shit that be pissing me off with YouTube or in general, and life in general. People sometimes just need to learn how to mind their motherfucking business. Like, I don't know. The type of person I am, I don't give a fuck about what other people do as, as long as it don't affect me. And then maybe I might be lying a little bit when I say that. Like, I give a fuck what you do because as long as it don't affect me, but... I ain't trying to let you hurt no motherfucking body neither. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to let you disrespect me or somebody in front of me. And I'm not about to let you hurt nobody's kids or animals. So, you know, it all depends on what the situation is. But I find it really funny that some people be so fucking nosy and quick to say some shit that they know nothing to fuck about. Like, okay, bitch, you know nothing about my motherfucking crowns in my teeth. So, um, because I got crowns in my teeth, which are supposed to be veneers, I already said in the video they're not motherfucking veneers. They're crowns. Look the shit up. They're totally different. I wasn't a candidate for veneers, okay? Because I just wasn't. Veneers sit on your teeth more, and it doesn't go up in your gums like the crowns. They cover the entire tooth. Crowns cover the entire tooth. But either way, here nor there, like, I was just like, shut the fuck up sometimes. Motherfuckers always just so motherfucking nosy. Don't never know when to shut up. People just, in general, really don't know when to shut up. Like, do y'all bitches ever know when to mind your motherfucking business and give it a rest? Like, give it the fuck a rest. A break. Please do. Because I'm not that bitch. Like, I'm definitely not that bitch. And that's just one thing I wanted to bring into awareness that the world needs to learn how to mind their motherfucking neck at times. Like, seriously. Mind your business. I'm just so sick of people and what the fuck they got to say, like always. Or like a comment that I read, and I didn't even say anything about it, but some lady was like basically um, about my daughter's weight and how her son was that size and how he lost the weight when he turned 17 and, he, and it wasn't healthy for him and all of this crazy shit. First of all, nobody fucking said it was healthy. Nobody said it was unhealthy. A lot of people claim to realize, uh, listen, y'all don't know what my daughter goes through. You don't know her metabolism. You don't know if she's on medication. I don't think I need to share all of that information with anybody about her health issues because it's just motherfucking YouTube. This is not Dr. Phil, okay? This is a not anything like that where it's motherfucking your business to know my daughter's health reasons. Just know that she do fucking YouTube videos with me at times and that's the fuck it. If you don't like her or me or her size or mine, then by all means, there is a button on the X on the top left or right corner, wherever the fuck it is, that you can always click the fuck off of or you can just use the go back button. But I don't really give a shit about, okay, that's great. I sh you know what I ended up doing? I have to sometimes not be in my petty ways because I can be a really petty person at times, um, especially like I had I've told you guys before. If a bitch don't have shit to do, and you fucking with me, and when I say you fuck with me, meaning you could be fucking with my family or anything like that, if a bitch don't have shit to do, I'm going to be petty all day to you. I'm going to just find it in my willpower to fuck with you because I'm bored. Out of boredom, if you say the wrong thing to me or any type of social media and I'm bored, Girl, I'm at your throat all day like a little fucking gnat fucking with you, buzzing in your ear fucking with you like a fly fucking with you. You'll be like, damn, I hate that bitch. Now nah, I really fucking hate her because she just don't stop. She just don't motherfucking stop. Oh, I can't stand her. Why the fuck did I even say some dumb shit on any of her pictures or comments? Look at her. She just, she won't stop. And then I, I get to the point where I just keep going and keep going. And to that person that started it gets really mad. Be like, you so immature. Why? You started, bitch, motherfucker, you started. So, you know, I'd be the first to tell you, yes, a bitch be petty on some real shit. I can get really, really petty. So anyway, I just used this NYC, what is this, the Color Wheel Mosaic Face Powder. I like to use it for anything. You could use it, for, well, not anything, because I'm, you know, whatever. So, yes. 
Um, but other than that, that has been my week. I have just been trying to chill. I got some packages in my post office box, some cards, which I was so surprised about and I was so thankful for. And you guys already know I'm going to tell you guys thank you. So, before we even go any further, so I want to send some special thank yous and shout outs. Um, I don't know what I, oh, the rest of the stuff I put it away and used it. But, uh, Miss Girl, who always sends me stuff, she sends me the nicest stuff. This, she sent, this is one of my favorite Wonder Woman items ever. Like, no lie, seriously. When she sent this to me, the first thing, it was in a box. She sent me a box of my own and Mumsy a box. And it was for my birthday, right? Soon as I opened it up, I was like, oh my God, it was, this is my favorite Wonder Woman item. Like I have another one too, but this one is this huge bag from Comic Con and it's vintage. When I say it's vintage because it's from Comic Con 2008. I don't know where she finds these things at, but it's huge. It's a huge bag. And at first I was like, what am I going to do with this? And I was going to use it to put my laundry in. But then I was like, no, I'm going to tell Tinky, my grandson, to get in it. And he's inside of it. He's on a picture on Facebook, on Instagram, inside of it. But I was like, you know what I'm going to do with this? Because I love it so much and I really don't want to use it for my um, dirty clothes. I'm going to get one of those big frames, those big poster frames from Walmart, and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to put that right in there. I'm going to hang it on my wall because I love it so much. I have this huge poster on my bathroom door now that someone sent me that I showed you guys. It was a Wonder Woman one, too. I love that one so much. I pinned it up there, but I'm going to go get a frame for that one and put it in that, too, because she had it made on, like, picture paper. Amazing. Amazing. And actually yesterday, which was Monday, me, Mumsy, and Nay, we went to see Wonder Woman. I wanted to go see it like on my birthday, but I didn't want to bring my grandson. It was two and a half hours. That was like a long time. It was really a really good movie. I'm pretty sure they're going to come out with more after that because of the time frame, the time era that they set the movie in. So I really do believe there'll be more, especially at the end. She was talking to Bruce Wayne. You know, she made her little cameo appearance in Batman versus Superman. So I'm pretty sure there'll be more Wonder Woman movies. And let me tell y'all, for those of you who've seen it, that girl who played Wonder Woman is beautiful. Oh, my God. Certain times of the movie, she just resembled the original so much to me. She did an amazing job. I really, really enjoyed the movie. But I was really looking forward to seeing it in our, our time era. But I'm pretty sure that they'll work their way up to that by making more movies. So... It was really, really a good movie. So I want to send some th birthday thank yous and loves to Miss Gurr for sending me and Mumsy a bunch of cool stuff. Color pencils, markers, crayons, all of this cool stuff. Love it. I am like in love with the bag. I love that so much. And then one of my favorite divas as well, she always texts me. We text a lot. Um, Her YouTube name is And You Don't Stop Yo. And I never can say her right, her name correctly. Um, ugh. I think it's Cherry. It's Cherry. And she lives in Virginia. Well, she was so sweet. She sent me a gift card, two gift cards to the Spa Finder. Um, she texted me beforehand because she wanted to make sure it was all right. But she sent me two gift cards to the Spa Finder, which was amazing. I've never, ever in my life been to a spa. I've never had a facial. I've never had a massage. I, I got my feet rub but that's at the Manny Petty place you know what I'm saying they have to do that but I've never oh you know what I'm lying I did have a foot massage you know like one of those little booths at the mall I got one of those which was really relaxing but I never had like a full body massage so I've been I've looked at some of the places I'm gonna have to look up to see what each one means or call them but they have ones that's called like a deep tissue massage and I'm not really sure what that is and then they have the one with the rocks on it I don't really know if I want that one but I want to find a spa that you could just go to and they can like wrap you in seaweed and put you put you in mud well maybe not i don't know about all of that but there's some that bathe you like i don't i don't really need nobody washing me neither because that's just doing the most like no no i don't know mm -mm. but i want to go to one where you just sit around you just relax and you drink all day and i think they do have those out here they're like in scottsdale which is it's not that far so i might have to do those but for the massage massage they do have them and they're for like an hour you get an hour and they're 50 bucks so 
She gave me more than enough and I want to tell her thank you so much. I'm like so excited about this. I'm going to look by the time I finish with this, maybe they can get me in an appointment tonight. I would love to get a massage. Let them rub me down, baby. Rub me down. So I did get that and I'm so excited. So I will text you later, girl. Um, I also got a card from one of my other divas. I love it. First of all, listen, then she sent me this cute card, Tori Z. And this card was like, it's your birthday. And these guys are looking for you. Now, when I first seen the card, right? All right, listen, look, it was like, they looking for you. It's like, it's your birthday. Um, and these guys are looking for you. But since they didn't stop and ask for directions, they ended up on this card instead. Oh, well, happy birthday. And she wrote me a message here and stuff. And, um, I, when I looked at the card, I was like, girl, I was like, bitch, they ain't looking for me. Shit. First of all, they too young, but it looked like they looking for each other. Okay. No shade. Cause you know, I already know I am not against the gay community. Cause I love every fucking body. Gay, straight, bisexual. Um, there's a whole bunch of other, I'm just a people person. Put it like that. So I don't care what you like or what you you, you guys already know. I've already had my fair share of relationships with females, okay? So, it is what it is. But when I read it, I was like, nah, these 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 niggas ain't looking for me. Not the way they standing in there. They looking for each... I think they found who they was looking for, okay? And if they was looking for me, um, once they find me, they're going to be like, oh, I want her old black ass, okay? So... I thought it was hilarious and shit, but the message that was inside Tori was even better, okay? Because she just was like talking to me like an old friend, you know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what I be feeling when I read these cards and y'all motherfuckers be talking to me like y'all be sitting right here. So that's what I be feeling. I love getting a card and reading it, a good long letter. I love it. I'm old school, so you know what I'm saying? An email is cool too, but I like the cards because I get to keep them. Then when I open this up, this is what I'm talking about because people know me very well it was a rainbow all right now first of all y'all motherfuckers know peaches aka peaches from um douglas douglasville georgia okay peaches sent me this and i was like hold up the bitch know i like rainbows i love look look at my nails i love rainbows okay um some people probably think, oh, she like rainbows because she gay or whatever. No, bitch. That's not the reason, okay? I like rainbows because at the end of a rainbow, it's always supposed to be something good. So even if you don't see a rainbow really at a rainbow, you have to imagine life as a fucking rainbow because you go through a lot of shit. It's a hurdle. And there's levels to rainbows, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's, hurt, it's a levels to life. At the end, you go through a hurdle or some bullshit some other bullshit whatever but at the end there's always something good just like at the rainbow so you know what i'm saying i i have a different way of looking at shit but does it have like a muffin in it like you know what I'm saying? it's like a muffin type of cake so i have like um i analyze shit and i have a way of looking at shit and that's just my way of looking at it and rainbows always have something good at the ends of it always i don't know if it's money or whatever but it's always something motherfucking good at the end of a rainbow. So, you know what I'm saying? I love a good rainbow. So, I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to say thank you so much for my birthday stuff. I appreciate it. So, now, anyway, so let's get on to this real talk. And I'm going to just finish doing my makeup as we do the real talk. So, yes, if y'all motherfuckers need a video that is about y'all, then by all means, go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com if you want to change the names of the people in the email meaning you know that bitch gonna be watching me and you don't want her ass knowing you talking about her okay go ahead and send me a message but let me know in the beginning that you already went ahead and changed the names Okay, so let's get into this. So I'm going to read some of these off of my computer so I can see a little bit better. Um, okay, so first one. Let's do this. Hello, I love your Real Talk videos and I need some advice. I'm a 31-year-old transgender female. You can call me Honey. I have been dating a man we will call Tanner on and off for three years. 
When I met him, I was working in a topless strip club. He was dating one of the other dancers whom I didn't get along with. When she was not present, he approached me and told me like he liked my tattoos and he is a tattoo artist and he would give me a free, a free horror theme tattoo for Halloween. He obviously saw I have an edgy look and used that opportunity to talk to me. He initially did not know I was a transgender. I let him, I let him tattoo me and we were talking very often. When I told him, he never been, he, he had never been with anyone like me before, but he really liked me and was willing to give it a try. Then he came and spent a week with me at my place. At that time, I had a man and I was just using him to piss the girl off that I didn't like. I went back to work after that week with photos of him and myself together and showed them to the girl um, and showed them to the girl and showed them to the girl to break them up. I'm sorry guys because I'm trying to read this on my on computer. Three years later I am now single and we were still we are still in communication. I told him two months ago I wanted to take our relationship to the next level and be monogamous. He told me he was not ready. Two months later now I found out he was with a new girlfriend he is living with. This really hurt me. I reached out to him and expressed my feelings and he told me he is only using her for a place to stay while he finishes college. By the way, I am 31 years old and he is 24. He tells me he's in love with me and the reason he didn't want a relationship with me is because he is not where he wants to be in life and he, is, he cannot provide the finer things that he knows I like. I feel like he is full of shit. However, when we first met and we were first together, it felt right. I have never been a weak bitch to wait around for men, but I am in love with him and feels he matches me perfectly. He can never meet guys. I can never meet guys. I have chemistry with him. I like him. Um, and I just don't know what to do. He still comes and sees and spends time and, and spends the night despite the fact that he lives with her. He doesn't answer when she calls him while he's with me. The vindictive part of me wants to be vindictive and expose him to her and ruin their relationship. Another part of me wants to wait around like a dumb bitch until he's ready and available. And the old me is telling me he's a fuckboy and just leave his ass alone. But it's harder than it sounds. What should I do? Please help. P.S. I've attached some photos of us from about a year ago and a short video from last weekend so you can know who you're talking about and see the chemistry between us. And yes, girl, I got on a lace front wig from Sassy Secrets on the pics and videos. I know they're late and... <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's crazy. She was like, I know they're laid and slayed. You were the one to inspire me to buy the lace front wigs from Sassy Secrets many years ago and you're on your old channel. Thank you for your lifetime and thank you for reading this. Oh, well, okay. So first of all, yes, I remember Sassy Secrets. That was like the first, um, oh, when well, let me watch it. That is like the first, um, lace with company I worked with ever and she's so cute like okay they do look cute together um they really really do but okay so she did tell me let's see hold on let me see can I see the video no it won't let me see the video okay so his name what is his name his name is Tanner and her name is honey so honey did tell Tanner that she was trans transgender after a while, which is fine. Like, ain't nobody told you you got to tell him right away what your sexual preference is or what you were at one time in life. It doesn't fucking matter. But she did give him the respect and tell him. And I think that, like, that's one, number one, important. Like, you should at least have the common courtesy to tell the person, like, you know, this is what I, I was, or this is what I am, or this is what I'm doing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody might feel a different way. Me, personally, I like everybody. I don't give a fuck what you are. As long as you're happy, I love it. Okay, so... Now, here's the, here's the shit. Here's the, here's the issue. Tammy want to know, is he a fuck boy? I mean, honey want to know. I, why am I calling... Tanner is the boy. Why you couldn't pick a better name than that, honey? So, honey want to know, is he a fuck boy? Basically. And she also feel like he full of shit. Now, here's my thing. You liked him and y'all, y'all kind of like grew apart. Y'all went your separate ways and 
He was already with somebody, but that same person that he was with, you worked with that bitch at the strip club. You just didn't like her, okay? So when she wasn't around, he was trying to kick it to you or whatever. And you got with him, you invited him over, you let him tattoo you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, for one, I'm gonna tell you what. I don't really find that to be too attractive. You know why? Because for one, you kind of was vindictive when you did the shit. And you even admitted to the shit that you only did that shit because you was being vindictive and you ain't like the bitch that you was working with, with at the strip club. I don't find that to be too cool because I'm going to tell you why. It's called karma. What goes the fuck around will come back the fuck around. And in the same shit that you didn't just did to this bitch, it's going to happen to you. Like you wouldn't want nobody to do that shit to you. So don't do it to nobody else. That's for one. But you already did that. Been there, done, did that. You already did it. So it's too late. So now y'all are back in touch with one another. But he got a girl. And here's the thing. He just told you he didn't want to be in a serious relationship with you. Because he's still going through things in life. He's not where he wants to be in life. He knows he can't provide for you like you would want to provide. Um, be provided for. He knows he can't give you the final things in life. And so that's the reason why he doesn't want a committed relationship. However, he's cool with living with the next bitch and using her for a place to stay. Cause that's cool with him. Like he all right with that. Like he like cool with that. Let me tell you something. If a nigga was to tell me some shit like that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was digging him and feeling him and then he had the audacity to tell me, like, I don't really like the bitch. I'm only with her because I need a place to stay, but I really do like you. Do you really think that I'm going to take this motherfucker serious? Like, oh yeah, he really likes me. And that's why he's with me because he really likes me. He's only using that bitch for a place to stay. What make you motherfucking think that he not using you for something? Like, I'm just saying, that's how niggas do. They think that they, by telling you that they only fucking with this bitch that they living with because they trying to get shit out of you or get shit out of them, but they really want to be with you. Bitch, what make you really think that that nigga's not using you too and trying to clown you? Like, I'm sorry, but even if he wasn't, I'm not cool with a dude telling me he only with the next bitch because he need a place to stay he only using her like that shit don't sit well with me so you basically telling me you a bum ass nigga that can't do shit on his own you can't stand on his own feet so you use bitches you use whoever the fuck you can use to get what you need and get the fuck around like okay I'm sorry, but that shit just don't really sit well with me and I'm gonna need you to back the fuck up and I'm going to need my space. Like, I'm going to need you to give me space because we're not cool like that. So, because he told you, honey, that he only want her for a place to stay, but he really liked you and he want to be with you and he love you. So, you think that he really mean that shit? Let me tell you something. That nigga is with whoever the fuck he can be with, okay? He is confused. And I'm sorry, but here's my thing. You either going to like men or women or both and or whatever and that's fine whatever he likes is a sexual preference and it doesn't matter to me but he likes whatever a person can do for him meaning it doesn't matter what they got down their pants or who they are as a person individually heartfully he gonna use you for whatever the fuck he can get so you may look like an opportunity to him because he's probably probably an opportunist okay so here honey come with her cute fine ass laid and slayed to the gods and he like oh she looking for love in all the wrong places but she going for what i'm telling her right now so i'm a i'm a i'm a lay it on that bitch and I'm going to feed her with whatever lies she might go for because she's vulnerable and she's being open and ready. Row. Ready. Open and willing. Row. Okay? So I'm going to feed her some motherfucking lies and lines to get her to get on my good side or to get on this bitch good side. And then I'm going to get what the fuck I want. He is not only a fuck boy. But a con artist and a scammer and a weak ass nigga. I hate motherfuckers who use other people for shit, okay? That's like my pet peeve. Nigga, if you can't get the shit on your own, then please allow me to have space and don't approach me, okay? Don't approach me. Let me tell y'all. 
The other day, I was at the grocery store, and there was this dude, okay? First of all, I'm very selective about who the fuck I fucks with. Friend, foe, enemy, whatever. If you want to be my enemy, you got to be a certain type of enemy. Because I'm not just going to fuck with just enemies, okay? Because some enemies be really motherfucking enemies. Them be like some fucking, um... Um villains, some motherfucking story, t story villains, some comic villains, and I don't really need them motherfuckers as my enemies with certain kind of powers and shit. I picks my enemies just like I picks my friends, okay? I don't need no motherfucking enemy that really don't like me putting voodoo and spells and shit on me. Them the motherfucking enemies I don't want. I don't even want to know you in general. I don't want you to be my motherfucking friend. I don't want you to be anything to me but far the fuck away and non-existence. Don't even know me. I don't even want you to know my social media handle because I don't want you in my motherfucking circle. I don't want you to dislike me and throw some voodoo. I just don't want you around me, okay? So I picks my enemies too. Hey, let me tell y'all. Enemy or foe, friends or foe, you got to pick them real careful because they all are out for some shit, okay? A friend could be out for some shit, too. Don't get it twisted. You think these bitches all be your friends and them be the worst ones. Those really be your motherfucking enemies, okay? Those be the enemies. But, like I was saying, I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying, but this nigga's out to get whatever the fuck he can get from whoever the fuck he can get it. If you know he a fuck boy then he's a fuck boy. Those are the type of motherfuckers that you just can't keep around for too long. And I'm sorry, like I was saying, I hate for niggas to be trying to use women. That be like the worst thing in the world to me or anybody like, they always trying to use their dick game. Like nigga, there's somebody else probably across the street or next door. They got, dick game too probably a million times better than yours okay so let's not get it twisted or they try to use you and smile up in your face men and women they come with some bullshit and some stories and be like trying to swindle every motherfucking body or try to talk to you just to get in your good graces because they always not always but sometimes they got some shit that they sleep um and nine times out of ten i could spot they ass and i will stop <laughs> I will stop your punk ass in your tracks right there, okay? Because that's just what the fuck I do. <laughs> like a few days at the grocery store. Now, dude, I see you, and I see you eyeing me. But I'm about to tell you, don't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? I think with men, they always try to get you when they feel like that you vulnerable or they try to compliment you. And then when they come with they fucking greasy ass compliments or dumb ass stories, they feel like they done reeled your ass in. Like, you know, you done threw out the line at the pond, catching some fish, and then they done reeled you in with that good compliment. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's what he basically is doing to you. He done reeled your ass in with that good compliment of, well, I was just using her for a place to stay, okay? And you probably like, oh, I'm going to come over and spend the night with you, but I'm not going to answer the phone when she call. Nigga, you best not answer the motherfucking phone when she call if you over here at my motherfucking house because you're going to fuck it up on both ends. You're going to fuck it up for your ass and you ain't going to have a place to stay. And then you're going to fuck it up on your ass on this end because you ain't going to have no bitch to fucking use you or use or be using. This is what I'm talking about when men try to come at you with these compliments and they think that they could try to will you in. I'm at the grocery store, okay? I like to go to the grocery store. Who don't motherfucking like to go to the grocery store? Maybe not all the time, but sometimes I like to go to the grocery store. So I'm at the grocery store, you know what I'm saying? Minding my motherfucking business. Oh, you look, you know, I ain't got no makeup on that day. I'm with my, my, my momsy boo. And I'm minding my motherfucking business. Dude starts smiling at me. Okay? As soon as he see me get out of my truck. Now, it's not like a glamorous truck or nothing like that. It's a truck. It's a motherfucking truck. I was happy I got that bitch back the other day because I was in tow. I had to get it out of the tow yard because I didn't have no license. Now, a bitch got two licenses. One for New York and one for Arizona. I don't even know how that's fucking possible, but they sent me one. 
New York sent me a new license here to Arizona. and got my Arizona address on it, but whatever. So he saw me get out of my truck. And let me tell you something. I don't even drive it like that because, for one, the AC is not blowing as cold as it like to be. And when it's 120 degrees outside, you need that shit to be as cold as it would need to be. So I only drive it around here until I get the AC fixed. And plus, it needs new tires, okay? So I don't really get on the freeway with it. And I got love the seats. It's hot up in that bitch. So, and the tires are not cheap. They're like $800 because they have, I got 22 inch rims. So, anyway, I guess he felt like, oh, this bitch got some money. No, nigga. If I did, I'd have some new motherfucking tires up on that bitch. And I have a blowing ass cold AC. That's why I drive my Malibu around all the time. But... The car do look really nice. Once I finish getting it fixed up, like, you know what I'm saying? Get some new tires and some AC, then I'm good. But anyway, so he's standing outside smiling. I don't know why the fuck he's smiling at me. And on top of that, I could care motherfucking less, okay? Because I'm not in the mood. It's hot outside. And nigga, please, all right? You know, how you doing? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Oh, you look happy. I hope you have a great day. That's all I said. And you want to start talking. Let me, let me, and you know what I said? I have to stop him in his tracks. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about asking me for my number, okay? Just don't even think about it. All right. So he already knew, and I already knew, nigga, good fucking bye, and wait for that motherfucking Uber that you waiting for to pick your ass the fuck up, because I'm not driving you nowhere, and you not getting nothing what I got, okay? Because what I got is for me and the children that lives with me, and that's about the fuck it, okay? So, don't. So sometimes, it's, you know what? You got to spot they ass is coming because men and women, and I'm going to say women because y'all bitches know y'all be using a motherfucker too. Y'all bitches know y'all be using men too. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it because let me tell you something. If I could find somebody that's gullible and dumb and want to pay for everything for me and do everything in the world for me, then I'm going to. And not even gullible and dumb. But when I say gullible and dumb, I mean, some people just don't realize that they being used. Like, I'm, how do you not know that you being motherfucking used? This motherfucker treats you like shit. Don't even be around your bitch ass and be using the fuck out of you. And you don't even know that shit. But okay, if that's, if that's what works for your ass. But let me tell you something, honey. He's a fuck boy and he's not interested in carrying on a relationship with you at no point now, next week, or in anybody's future or futuristic future. It's not going to happen. And it's unfortunate that it has to be like that, but he's a fuck boy. And if he's with somebody because they, because he wants something from that person and he's using them, then why would you even want to set yourself up with being with some like, someone like that? If someone was to tell me, hey, I'm only with that bitch because she could provide for me and she could give me what I need and what I want, which is a place to stay without me having to pay for anything, free food, rent, board, pussy, wash my clothes and cook, all that shit, um, I'm not going to feel really good being with that type of person because that right there shows me that that person is lazy and basically just let's break it back Break, break it all down because I don't need to tell you they're lazy. They ain't got nothing going for themselves. They this, they a busted ass nigga or they a busted ass bitch. Okay, busted ass negro or busted ass bitch. And I'm not going to feel really good about dating someone like that. Now, as far as exposing him to his girlfriend. For what? You already knew what you was getting into when you started fucking with him years ago when he had a girlfriend and you exposed him. Why even go that route again? Okay? If you know he's a fuck boy and that's all he's worth, then don't make yourself look stupid because you may not feel like you're making yourself look dumb by exposing him, but you are. And it's called karma. So if that's what he's going to do and if that's what he's wanting to do and by using somebody to have a place to stay and somebody to wash his drawers and cook for him and fuck and all that, then let it be. You know that that's not you. And eventually that poor young girl is going to know the same thing as well. And when she does find out, He's just going to use and move on to the next bitch and use her. And what are you going to do? Be Captain Save-A-Hole? It's not going to work out like that. So 
allow him to be his fuck boy and allow him to be the fuck boy that he is and just leave it the fuck alone and move on with your life because nine times out of ten his scam his scheming ass is already gonna be caught and then what's gonna happen he ain't gonna have no place to stay he gonna have to find a next chump to move on to and have a place to stay because see here's the thing he told you that story but who even knows if that's the truth, okay? What makes you even believe for once in your life that that motherfucker is telling you the truth about that is just some pussy because or he's just only with her for a place to stay? What makes you think that that's really true? You know what I'm saying? He might not even be living where you think he's living at. And that might be some other type of situation. Either way, why even bother giving yourself stress and putting yourself through shit that's not even fucking necessary? Let me tell you something. We all grow up and we all need to grow up after a while and we find somebody who we like or want to be with but then that even goes to stay for say for me like i've been with somebody for years and years and i love him to death my my ex-husband but sometimes you gotta let shit the fuck go i'm not saying let him go you know what i'm saying but sometimes you just gotta let shit go you gotta grow up and you gotta let shit go and i mean like i did that for a while you know i got divorced from him and i let it go because it was toxic for me the relationship that you in now is toxic for you because he don't really give a fuck about you he's worried about what the fuck he can get now like i was saying it doesn't matter what your sexual preference is or who you are as a person or anything like that as long as they treat you with respect and love you then that's all that matters however fuck boy is not treating you with respect He's using you and you're already being used. You just failed to realize that he's coming to your home and he's staying with you for the weekend or for days. Y'all are having sex. He's using you for sex and whatever else he can get. And then he goes to her house and he's got somewhere to stay and he's using her for whatever he can get. So honey, you already being used. He the fuck boy, you the fuck girl, get it together and move the fuck on to the next relationship. Okay. Because. I ain't about to be nobody's fuck person. I may want to fuck you, but I ain't about to let you fuck me over. That's one thing I'm not about to do. So give honey your advice. Okay, so this one I'm going to read from my phone, okay? Hey, April. First, I wanted to say that I love your channel, and I think that you give the realest advice on YT. Even if you don't respond to this on your real talk, I hope that you will email me back. My friend Lisa and I have been best friends for seven for years, and she's really like my sister. Recently, we haven't been seeing eye to eye. Maybe about seven months ago, she told me she had a crush on me when we first met. And then that same night, she tried me. The next day, I called her over to tell her I didn't like it and that it could never happen again. Of course, being besties, we share everything with each other. But all of a sudden, when I respond, I'm being judgmental. And it seems like she's always trying to compete with me. At first, I wasn't sure, but other people around us have brought it to my attention also. But being her friend, I blew it off. On top of that, she thinks that I'm interested in the niggas she likes. That's a dub. That's a dub. I've been I've stopped going over her home as much because of the male company she keeps around her daughter. She even said to me that I think I'm better than her because I'm in a relationship and she's a single mom. I have no idea how the two even go hands in hand. I try to take people for who they are and not put my values on them. When I met her, I know she has self-esteem issues, but who's perfect? It's that if it's that's now I feel it's that now I feel those issues are affecting our friendship and I can't talk to her because she will get offended. I really don't know what to do. I don't want to lose her as a friend or sister, but I don't feel like I should have to deal with the bullshit in the friendship. Thank you in advance. Claire, uh, Claire you can use our names. Well, I don't know the best friend's name, but, oh, Lisa. Okay. So Lisa and Claire have been friends for a long time um and about seven months seven months ago her best friend told lisa told her she had a crush on her and then she tried her i don't know how she tried her 
But I'm pretty sure I do know she probably was trying to give her some of that tongue action or whatever type of girl on girl action goes down. Like, you know, I know, I know what the fuck goes down, but I'm saying. So Claire wasn't comfortable with it. Okay, because she don't go that route. She don't have to be comfortable with it. We friends. Let's not ruin the friendship. And I truly honestly believe that. Like, let's not ruin the friendship because we friends. Okay, don't go there. Like that that shit happened to me like she was my friend i don't want to say she was my best friend but she was my friend she lived next door like she tried me and she got me and then i moved here and then she was facetime me all the time we was really close and i missed her to death and she said she was gonna move out here she never did but she was always calling me facetime me and she started getting jealous and it was like you know what we can't be friends no more we can't be nothing no more you can't, oh my God, I thought I was your girl. We, you can't even be that no more, honey. I'm going back to dick. All right, strictly diggly here in this motherfucker. All right, I was going through some shit in my life, and I'm going to go back to the shit that I, I know best. I'm just saying. Okay, so, but, so, but it, it seemed like ever since you told her that you weren't interested, basically, like, because that's what I call it as not being interested. When you tell somebody, no, don't do that. Don't ever try that shit again. That's because you're not interested. Um, she feels some kind of way. You know what I'm thinking, Claire? I'm thinking that she she might have kind of like embarrassed her friend Lisa. And not intentionally, you know what I'm saying? But like, it's one thing to tell somebody no that you're not interested or like no or like kind of like push them away but when you when you have a conversation with them and you basically tell them what they did was wrong and how it made you feel uncomfortable or whatever it makes that person feel uncomfortable in some type of way you know what i mean and it might have embarrassed her I, i'm gonna tell you what if it were me i would feel embarrassed like what if that was me? Like, what if I would have hit on one of my friends and then she turned me down and then the next day she told me, like, listen, you can't ever do that again. I would feel so embarrassed. Like, I wouldn't even want to go around them again. Like, because I would feel really humiliated. And so maybe that's what her friend Lisa is feeling and maybe that's her way of lashing back out to her because you might have made her feel very inferior and just really embarrassed and humiliated by telling her like listen this can't ever happen again like some things you just gotta leave alone like I understand that was your friend and that's your friend and how it made you feel but some things you just gotta leave alone like I, I I'm saying like if it were me and somebody would have did that to me and I wasn't with it I would have just like pushed them away and like don't do that but I don't think I would have been able to say anything to them the next day because for one I'd be embarrassed I'm pretty sure Claire you was embarrassed to have to come to her and say like you know what I'm saying don't do that that could never happen again you had a crush on me so here's the thing though what does she have a crush on you or what? Because she's got all these different dudes around her and her daughter. And she's trying to say that, like, you jealous of her? Or are you trying to get with the guy she's talking to? But, like, bitch, you, what you should have said is, bitch, I ain't trying to get with no niggas that you fucking with. You were just trying to fuck with me. What the fuck? Like, I'm saying. Is she confused? Like, I mean, it's not confusion because maybe she like both girl and boy. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying now she's feeling some type of way. And I think it has a lot to do with you might have really embarrassed her. Even if it was just you two, you and her, it's still an embarrassment because you might, she might think you look at her some type of way or feel some type of way about her. And it's still um, an embarrassment. What you need to do, and I know I say this in a lot of my real talks. Oh, I messed my eye up. I know I say this in like a lot of my real talks, but it's the truth. You need to have a conversation with your friend. That's your friend. And you need to have a conversation with her. You're never going to get to the root of the problem unless you get to the root. That is the root of the issue. You and her relationship and what has been gone wrong to an extent and the only way you're going to find the answer out is by saying something and now if you're not the only person that is noticing this change you know what i'm saying this is what i do when my eyeliner don't come out correct like I, I mess up i take like some concealer or some eyeshadow primer and i just put it on a tiny brush and i fix it just like that because 
I am not about to take my eyeliner the fuck off. That's how I fix it. And then what I'll do is I'll go with that same little tiny brush, whatever color that I have right here on the lower lid, which is this one. And I'll just dab some and dab it right on top of there. Because that is the best fix. I used to have to wipe the shit off and girl bye it'll be a mess i'll be so upset sitting up here trying to put my eyeliner on and it's hard for me to put eyeliner on because my eyes are getting really hooded so the next thing that i'm getting done is my eyes i'm getting my eyes done i know y'all but just like girl what's next i'm my titties too no i'm not getting my titties done they just they got good bras for that shit and i'm not getting my butt done because it's big enough and uh they got they got they got some um shit that you can just do get a, big, a bigger booty um like some squats um, but I think like your friend is now probably embarrassed because you had to approach her and say to her, like, listen, bitch, I'm not with that shit. And I would be embarrassed too. Like, seriously, I would, I would be embarrassed as well. So, but I do say all the time to get to the root of the problem talk to the person. You got other people that's realizing that shit and you got other people that's noticing it. You need to talk to her. You have to let her know. Instead of not saying nothing, bitch, say some shit because eventually what's going to happen is she going to keep talking shit or she going to keep saying some smart shit out the motherfucking mouth and then you going to blow the fuck up and then your friendship going to be gone like down the drain. And all of that shit could have been avoided if you would just approach her and be like, listen, bitch. I'm going to need you to stop fucking disrespecting me and coming at me all type of sideways. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to happen. So you're going to have to have a nice long talk with her. You probably made her feel really uncomfortable and shit. Now, if you feel, now here's the thing. To me, that's just what I'm seeing. That's just probably her way of lashing back at you because you hurt her feelings. You, you basically was like, no, but you're not getting none of this stuff right here. I don't swing that way. So you hurt her feelings. It's a letdown. People feelings get hurt when they get told no. That's why I don't ever ask nobody for shit. I never ask nobody for shit because I hate the answer, the word no. And I, I don't like people doing shit for me. Um, because for one, it's a pride thing. Oh, I finally got my motherfucking eyeliner right. It's a pride thing. And then for one, I don't like people like doing stuff for me because I just be feeling like I don't like people saying, oh, that's why you got this done or, oh, I did this for you or no, I can't help you. Like I, that's when I start feeling embarrassed. So when you let somebody down or you turn them away, it's an embarrassment somewhat. But that probably was like a real embarrassment because you, you actually had a conversation with her about it. Like, this ain't about to happen. This is never going to happen. And sometimes those words could be hurtful regardless of how you say it. It can still hurt a person. And so for her way to get back at you might be like giving you attitude, trying to make her make you feel inferior, or saying things like, oh, you think you're better than other people because you're in a relationship or whatever, whatever. And that's her way of getting back at you. So I would really honestly, if that's your friend, if that's your friend, your best friend, and you really, really care for her, then what you need to do is you need to have a talk with her and let, let her know, like, listen, I understand how you felt about me and that you had a crush on me and I'm flattered, but I, I didn't, what I said to you, I didn't, I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings or make you feel any less of a person. I just wanted to let you know. And I feel like ever since that moment, we've had tension and some issues and I don't really don't want it to be like that because we're friends and I care for you dearly. And I would never want the friendship to mess up because of a misunderstanding. That's all you have to do is say to her. You know what I'm saying? If she's a grown woman and she's understanding, then she'll understand it. You know what I'm saying? She will definitely understand where you're coming from. And maybe you have to tell her that so that way she she won't feel inferior because like I said, if it were me, I would feel embarrassed if someone was to turn me down and then next day tell me like, no bitch, you and me, we ain't getting down. That's never going to happen. This ain't happening. Like I would feel really less of a person and I probably would never want to speak to you again because I felt humiliated. Even though it's you and I, I still felt humiliated. So I would definitely have this conversation with her because you know, nobody wants to feel inferior. Nobody wants to feel uneasy. No one wants to feel 
uncomfortable and embarrassed in a situation and sometimes subjects like that like with sex and different sexes and coming on to people that's those are touchy subjects and people's feelings easily can get hurt like that so i really think that that's where this is all stemming from and little things that she may say like oh you jealous or whatever really don't take that into like don't take that too deep but if you don't really like being around the people that she's with like if she's got all these different guys around her daughter and stuff as a friend I would definitely say something because with this day and age, people are weirdos out there. There's more pedophiles out there than we can even imagine. And I'm, for one, I have daughters. I have three girls and two boys. I don't, when I meet somebody or I'm in a relationship with somebody, I never bring them to my house. You can't meet my kids because first of all, I don't find you to be that serious, okay? But two, I'm not about to bring you around my kids. And guys, these days, they don't give a fuck what the age group is, unfortunately. Like, there's weirdos out there. So you really need to tell her you really don't know who you're bringing around your kids, girl or boy. That's like with that boy had a bitch, Nicole, when we were friends. She would have, she would go to the Legion. The Legion is where all the old guys are at. And she would have all these different dudes coming over to her house, fucking her, bringing her back to her room. You know what I'm saying? And you know what she was saying? She had three sons. She had three sons. And um, one of her sons was in jail. And then the other two, you know what I'm saying? They lived there. They was like, what, like 13 and, and, and 16 at the time, 13 and 15 at the time. She would be like, I'm grown. I'd be like, why you always got these guys coming to your house? I'm grown. I could do what I want to do. I'm like, okay. But she was like, you need to get you some i don't need to get me none and like i be telling her i'm not bringing i don't bring people around my kids i'm not bringing these no strange people around my kids and my daughters and my kids in my in my house please you grown please you can bring whoever you want i'm grown I, and that's why your sons don't respect you now and they be calling you all kind of hoes and shit and disrespecting you because you don't have all these different niggas in and out your motherfucking house fucking you like you nasty fucking dirty dog and then your sons disrespect you like that that's why okay that's why you don't supposed to bring just anybody around your kids, okay? That's just me. Maybe I'm old school. And some people be like, oh, well, you got five five, five kids to four baby daddies. Yeah, bitch. But I was in relationships with them for a while before I brought them to my kids, okay? You know what I'm saying? I was in a relationship. I don't just bring, I don't fuck anybody and just, psh. let me tell you something. Have a talk with your friend. Have a serious talk with your friend. And definitely bring up the fact that about how you feel uncomfortable with her having all these strange motherfuckers around your daughter or your kids, okay? And just tell her the reason why. It ain't because you jealous because you ain't getting dicked the fuck down. Hold the fuck up. A lot of bitches wish they was getting dicked the fuck down. Hey, one right motherfucker here, okay? But the motherfucker that I want ain't in this state. And then the other motherfucker that I want, well, we already know. I've talked about him many times in videos. I was only fucking with him because I know he looked good, but he's very shallow and thinks it's about himself. Yeah, he got a big ass motherfucking dick and he can fuck and eat some pussy. But I'm um, sorry, I'm not really fucking with you because you think you all that and ain't nobody got time for that. And who else you fucking? Like, seriously, I'd rather be by my motherfucking self. And at this point in the game, if I can't bring you around my kids and I don't feel comfortable bringing you around my kids, well, I guess there's no room for a relationship. I'm trying to figure out my life and get my shit together, okay? So, therefore, I don't even need to be in a relationship. And if I find a bitch or a nigga that wants to be with me, they're not coming around my kids first. I don't give a fuck what you got between your legs. That's just how it is with me. I don't know if you're trying to use me, trying to get something out of my house, or you need a place to motherfucking stay, okay? But it's not about to be here. But I would definitely talk to her and let her know, like, listen, I thought we was cool and we was friends, and this is what I want to talk to you about. Point blank, period. Just that easy. Now let me finish this motherfucking eye, okay? Because, look, I know y'all like, bitch, could you... Look, I'm not really good with eyeliner, I told y'all, but maybe today is the motherfucking day. You know what? Y'all bitches is my good fucking luck. Seriously. Because this eye, this eye is the more hooded eye. This is the one that be more slanted. And I don't know if y'all could tell because I finally got my eyeliner perfect. I had to do each eye different for each eyeliner because this one is more open than this one. Even with my lashes, I have to do them different. So that's the reason why I said I'm going to get um, surgery on my eyes so that they can be even and I can have a crease. You know what I'm saying? But I never could get them even like that. They're, they're normally like... It's never like a first go, but I think y'all bitches is my good luck for today. Seriously, like on some real shit. 
So let's get on to the next story, okay? Okay, so I don't know how long this one is, and hopefully I don't have to change my memory card, so we just gonna get into it, okay? Here we go. She called this one addiction. Hello, this may be long, so I'm gonna jump right into it. I've been in a relationship with my guy for two years now. I am 40 years old. He is 26. Yes, I know. The issue I'm having is how to let him go. He is an addict, a PCP and alcohol. He drinks every damn day and smokes that shit every other day. I have no idea how I got here. When he exposes his addiction, I had no clue as to what it could manifest into. It was like like day two of three and he got into my car with a cigarette. I noticed it was wet and wondered how could he smoke a wet cigarette and what was that smell? I asked him, he looked at me and kept puffing away. That was my first experience around 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 his family is full of addicts and even his uncle argued me down when i told him that he was doing what he was doing was bad he needed rehab the whole nine but his reflection was like you smoke weed it's the same thing but a different drug i saw the news i work in the hospital so i know the effects from that point however when he would get high he didn't act like that even my friend who told me to leave when i mentioned it to her changed her thoughts when she saw how he acted under an influence and was like he's not like the others you know the ones who are obnoxious walking around naked that dumb stuff so all of that in conjunction of hearing what I guess I wanted to hear, I stayed. Anyway, fast forward throughout this time, I have learned otherwise. He has assaulted me while he was high a couple of times. The thoughts of, the thoughts he has and behavior under it, and even sometimes thereafter, is unbearable at times. Constant accusations of me messing around, wanting to stay up all damn night, harassing me to drive my car like his dumb ass didn't have a four car pile up last year and is why he doesn't have his own vehicle. Like it bothers me to my soul at this point. I want out or at least to find a way to get him help because even though the stuff I've said is monstrous, he is a beautiful person. It's just them damn drugs. I tried rehab, the fool ran the fool ran away after two weeks. I've done my homework in this stuff and they say even after years they can have cravings. If I can't get him in the rehab longer than 14 days, then how will he quit the shit? He doesn't think he has a problem, but but between hospital visits, fake friends, stealing money from him while he's passed out and lockups, you would think he would say otherwise. How do you leave someone who you love due to their addiction and not make it seem like you're leaving them behind? His personality has changed. I see that he tries to put me down when in actuality every fall he claims I have is actually one of his. His ass stopped working for almost a year but wants to call me broke because I don't have extra money for this or that. When in actuality I'm like you're a grown fucking man who should be taking care of himself versus thinking I'm going to take care of you like I'm like his I'm like his motherfucking mom or he's the bay in the relationship <laughs> i have no kids and have never been pregnant so please understand my impatience and my right to notice to notion or of if i didn't have kids so i don't have to be responsible for anyone but myself i honestly can say i've never been the one to want to get into a commitment of any sort i cannot get out of that includes marriage something about being stuck so to speak oh she, she doesn't like commitments like that I don't know, but that's my issue. How to get him to either grow up and get off these drugs so we can be happily ever after or leave his ass and still be a supportive friend from a distance. After reading this over, I feel a, like a crazy woman. I should know better. I do know better. I just need strength to, in the direction I wish to go. Plus, I heard you talk about your ex-husband being a drinker. So I totally think you can see where I'm coming from. If there is, um, if there is a way, a possible prejudice, I will receive due to our age difference. Thank you. Whew. Okay, so she didn't tell me her name, but her name is going to be Ange. Ange. We're going to call her Ange, like Big Ange. So before I even get into that, where is my other stuff at? Because I find it so hard and so, like, it's not even sad because, you know something? I tell people all the time, you really cannot love, you cannot help who you love. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate, like, we can't say, well, I'm going to stop loving you because you're no good for me. Like, we can't, we can't say that. We can't, we can't feel that way. We can't do that shit. It is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to use this Black Ups um, Moisturizing Tinted Moisturizer. They sent this to me from um, Oxley. You can get this for free, too. And 
I used it if you don't want to use foundation you can use this which is really great it's lightweight so I'm gonna use this um, it really does good coverage for it to be a moisturizer so when it's hot like now you don't have to use anything so I'm gonna just use this the color that I have is the zero two and this is like some really like not too cheap of a stuff so if you can find like a good dupe for this then by all means get yourself a dupe girl but okay so like she was saying Ange, like big Ange, she got issues where her boyfriend, he's a PCP addict and an alcoholic. Honestly, I don't know what PCP can do to you because I'm not a drug addict. I like weed and I guess that's, I'm, but I'm not an addict to it. Like if I don't have it, then that's what it is. And okay, I do drink. Um, there was a time when I was drinking every day. But when I would drink every day, I wasn't getting drunk. That's one thing that I don't do is I don't get drunk because I just don't feel like the need. I just don't like the feeling that it gives me. Okay, I know y'all bitches is like, that shit is a little bit too orange or too dark for you. I'm going to fix it. Um, but I was with someone who was a drinker. He wouldn't drink every day. My husband wouldn't drink every day, but he would get drunk enough. Sometimes it would be like, a couple times a week or every week but either way he was an alcoholic because if you can't hold your liquor and you can't figure out when to fucking stop then you got a motherfucking problem all right and i don't need you making your problem mine and i think you can call them like alcoholics and shit if they've had enough dwis crash cars and all that type of shit well you're making issues if you have a problem to where you know what I'm saying? You can't hold your liquor and you're causing crashes and things like that. Then that's a problem. That's a problem. That's when people could call you an alcoholic and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's when it becomes an issue. But it's very irritating. And I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter how many fucking times you try to help the person and try to get them to stop drinking or stop drugging or bringing them to rehabs and doing whatever or talking them to talking to them to they blue in the face or to your blue in the face they're not gonna stop doing what the fuck they want to do until they want to do it okay so he's not gonna stop being an alcoholic, he's not going to stop being a crackhead until he's ready to stop. No matter how many times you try to help him and be there for him, he's not going to stop. And sometimes, you know what it takes is some tough love. Okay, it's unfortunate, but that's what it takes in time. It's some tough fucking love with people, you know. Um, as long as the person sees that you're on their side and you're helping them and even though you're constantly telling them, listen, you need to stop smoking or listen, you need to stop drinking, then they're still going to do it. They're going to yes you. They're going to listen to you. They're going to be like, you know what? You're right. I shouldn't do this. It's not good for me, et cetera, et cetera. You're so right about this. I'm going to stop. I'm going I'm to get myself together. They're going to tell you what you want to hear, which is unfortunate. I've, I've been there and done did that with my, my ex-husband. You know what I'm saying? He would tell me that he's not going to do this and he's not going to do that. Most of the time it was because he done got some bullshit. I done knocked him the fuck out which I did one year, um, or I had went to jail for beating him the fuck up because he was drunk, which I did another year. Um, and of course, it's always when he's gotten into trouble for some shit, which is unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? That's just how the fuck it works. What happened to my good lighting? Let me turn my light on here. It's going to blind y'all real quick for a second. Like, Ooh, and then it'll die down. But that's normally what happens. Like, they tell you what you want to hear because, you know, that's just how it is. That's just how it goes, okay? But here's the thing. As much as you love him, what about you? Like, I'm saying, do you love yourself enough to where you can just leave him the fuck alone and be on your own? You know what I'm saying? You already said, and that you don't like commitment. You don't like to be some in, in, a, in something where you're just stuck. And you're right. Being in a marriage can feel like you're stuck. I felt like that too. I don't think, like, I don't know. I don't think I would ever get married again. To be honest, I really don't know if I would ever get married again. It would, it would be like a long time, and you got to be like Mr. Perfect and Mr. Right for that shit for me. But 
you don't want to be with him anymore because of the drug addiction, but you want to be a supportive friend. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You can't be both. You can't be either. Because being with him is one thing. And if you don't want to be with him, honestly, you you guys really already had a relationship and you know his downfalls and shit. And he already knows how to pull your heartstrings and get you back involved with him. And so that's where the part where you being his friend is not going to work out. Like that shit is not going to work out. So the only thing that you can do that's best for him is to leave him the fuck alone. Like, yeah, we don't want to let people down and we don't want to leave them alone and we don't want to see them suffer and we don't want to see them hurt. But Here's the thing. Do you honestly think that he gives a fuck about you as much as you give a fuck about him? Not really. Not not really. Because if he did, then he would be there for you. Meaning he would he would be there for you the same way you're there for him. The same way you hold him down and hold his hands and bring him to rehab. He will be that same way for you. Meaning he would comply and he would do it because he loves you and you love him. He would do that for you. But he can't because he doesn't love you like you love him. And he doesn't even love himself. And sometimes with those people, it's unfortunate. But you have to leave them alone and you have to let them figure it the fuck out. What do you think that I did with my ex-husband? I had to leave him the fuck alone and let him figure it the fuck out on his own. You know what I'm saying? Because as many times as I have told him, you need to stop drinking. 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 All he would do is yes me. And he would be like, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. And he wouldn't. He, he would for a minute a minute is like a week and then he will go right back to the fuckery or the bullshit and so you know what i'm saying i had to leave him alone and then it's after i left him alone that he realized like yo you know what i fucked up i should have just complied and i should have just listened to you because you were telling me something for my own good because you loved me those are the type of people where you have to leave alone because he's not going to get it until he's on his last and he's on limbo. So even though you've gotten help for them and you've gotten them to go to rehab and sit, he's not going to stay until he's ready to go. That's just like with somebody in a domestic relationship. You tell somebody in a domestic relationship, leave that nigga alone because he just keep beating you upside your head. And she's like, yeah, I know, I know. She wants to leave him the fuck alone. Trust me when I tell you. Okay, sorry about that. Had to change my memory card. So like I was saying, like it's like you telling somebody until, the, until you blew in the face. Yeah, bitch, leave him the fuck alone because he keep beating on you. Or yeah, and just, she's just like, I know, I'm going to leave him alone. I'm going to leave him alone. You right, you right. Like you could tell that bitch till she blew in the face, till you blew in the face. She's not going to fucking leave until she's ready to fucking leave. That's just what anybody. You give somebody opinions and fucking advice, they're not going to take heed to that until they're ready. Um, you know, understand me. Understand what I'm saying. So with these type of people, drug addicts or whatever, it's it's hard to stop helping people, but you cannot help nobody that ain't trying to help themselves. Like basically, like dead ass serious. Like you cannot help anybody that don't want to help themselves. And it's unfortunate. And those type of people are the worst type. Like I'm not saying they're the worst type, but if they're not trying to help themselves, who gonna fucking help them? You? Cause um They not worried about how you feel, so obviously, why are you so worried about them? It's hard to turn your back on people, I get it. And it's hard to not help people, I get it. I have been there with my ex-husband, and I've been the same way. It was hard for me to turn my back on him. I, listen, I go through it sometimes with my own son. He's 19 years old. And you know, it's legal out here to smoke weed when you're 18 or whatever. And he have his little thing, and he want to go hang out with his friends, and they like to smoke weed too. But... I'm not playing that bullshit when you be too high all the time. Like, I can't deal with that shit. So I have to have a little talk with him, too. And at first, you know, he don't want to listen to me and shit. And I get it because you think you grown or whatever. But listen, if you live in my motherfucking house and I'm your mother and I still have to care for you and I'm responsible for you, you're not about to be getting high all the motherfucking time. Not on my dime. Not even on my dime because you got your own job and your own money. But I'm not about to see you waste your life and waste yourself away. And some people with smoking weed, some people might feel like, oh, it's not 
nothing, it's nothing. But one habit can come into something really bad, you know what I'm saying? And with these kids and the type of drugs that they like to use today, like those Zanny bars, and I don't know whatever else they use, but it ain't the same type of motherfucking high. So with me, I really try to keep my kids from all of that bullshit because I'm not about to allow that shit. But you know what? It's so sad when you try to help somebody and they just really don't want to take your help like that. Like they feel like they know everything and he's stealing. He got his friends stealing and he's aggravating you. And like, why would you want to be aggravated with somebody for so long? Like, I know you love the dude and you want to be around him, but like, seriously though, I'm not about to let nobody motherfucking aggravate me all day. And I damn sure don't want to be with no motherfucking crackhead. I'm not trying to diss him and say he's a crackhead, but he's a drug addict and he's an alcoholic. So now you got two horrible things together. Like, damn girl, you just like going through it over there. And why keep allowing yourself to go through that shit? Like, you know what? Sometimes it comes a time and a place when you got to put a stop and just be like, you know what? I'm done. And I don't know what your friends is telling you. Like he ain't like the rest of them who be walking around doing crazy shit. Um, he tch, bitch, please. That nigga is a little bit too off and I don't give a fuck what he's smoking. Be done with it. Like seriously on some real shit. Why is my grandson crying like that? Just be done with it. Like, I ain't about to let no motherfucking crackhead get me down and be driving me crazy and no shit, okay? For real. Just be done with it. And the best thing I would do if I were you to get him some motherfucking help is let him know, like, listen, I love you. But this relationship is not going anywhere. And as long as you continue to use drugs and alcohol, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, what he's going to do at first is he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to stop or whatever. Listen, girlfriend, you better be the bigger person and be really strong and just let him know. No, like I said, this relationship is not going anywhere and we need to end it. You cannot be his friend. As much as you would like to be his friend, his supportive friend, first of all, you way older than him. You 40. He 26. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you know what they say about men. They mature way later than us women. And I mean, that might be the case for some. I mean, I do know some women out there that's my age, like that dumb, bald-headed bitch, Nicole, who um still act like a child, like that dumb, bald-headed bitch, Nicole. But... He like a son to you. He could be like a son, I guess, somewhat. Like if you had a baby at a really early age. But, honey child, to me, now I'm starting to feel like, does he see you as a meal ticket? You know what I'm saying? Because you older than him. And first of all, it's nice to be a supportive friend, but sweetheart, be a supportive friend from real far and don't fuck with him no more. You Sometimes you have to, listen, Listen, Linda, listen. Sometimes you got to walk away from the situation and take yourself out of the equation to be insane, to keep your sanity. Where's my goddamn mascara at? Oh, just great. I didn't bring my mascara. Oh, well. I just needed it for my bottom lashes, but we're going to go without. And I'm trying to figure out, should I use the e.l.f.? I think I'm going to use this one. Or the NYX. Like, you guys can get either one. This one is cheaper than this one. Elf is cheaper, but I like this Elf. And I do like this NYX, too. Um, but we don't use the NYX. Um, sometimes you have to distance yourself and leave motherfuckers alone for your own sanity. Because if you don't, it's just going to drive you crazy and it's going to fuck up your shit. And at 40 years old, Bitch, I'm pretty sure that you got some shit. You got yourself together. I would hope the fuck you do, okay? And this is just a little setback for you. And there's nothing wrong with not wanting a commitment or to be married. You're not the only person in the world that feels that way. And I'm pretty sure you won't be the last motherfucker in the world that feels that way. There's a lots of people that don't want to be married or be in a committed relationship. I'm probably one of them, okay? I don't know if I'm going to use this LA Girl Pro Face HD matte or this LA Girl Tan 
it listen i don't know do they look the same color to y'all because i really want to go get my milani in the next room but i'm not no they don't look the same color i'm gonna use this one um because i don't want to be rude and get up again but i would hope so at your age that you got shit together um and you could offer yourself some help meaning walk the fuck away it's nice being in love and finding love and and liking people and just loving people but when you are in a relationship with somebody and they're bringing you down and it's not healthy then it's time to walk away you know what i'm saying it's definitely time to walk the fuck away i'm just saying i'm definitely just saying like me let me tell y'all something about me don't y'all bitches think that um i want to be loved too like that sounds like a fucking a rap song i need love mm -mm -mm. i need love like you know what i'm saying like don't get it twisted like i do get lonely too and i be wanting someone to hit me up and be like, yo, girl, I love you. Let me come and take you out. Let me buy you some flowers. Let me come through, pick you up. Because you ain't coming inside unless I really know y'all ass. Like I said, when I bring you around my kids, you don't even go know where I'm living at. So let me just, I don't know. All I'm basically saying is we all do need love. We all do want a relationship. And in each relationship comes a headache. Ain't no relationship golden and ain't no relationship perfect. However, a relationship should not be built on the other person is always doing something for the other person and is always sharing the load and is always bearing all the pain and shit like that. Like, it shouldn't be like that, okay? When you in a relationship with somebody, it's birds of a feather flock together. And I'm sorry, if I found out that my boyfriend or my ex was a, or husband was a crackhead, I definitely ain't fucking with you no more. Like, I'm going to just cut you the fuck off because alcoholics don't steal your shit, but a crackhead, a drug addict will. And I'd be damned if you about to steal any of my motherfucking shit that I done worked hard for and busted my ass. And if you going to jail and doing four car pileups and doing all of that shit, you costing me more money than enough? Because I've already been there where this nigga was costing me more money than enough, bailing his ass out of jail, getting my cars out of tow, fixing my car, and all kind of bullshit. Then, listen, I'm going I'm to need you to go. And the bitch get tired of that shit after a while. So here's the thing, Ange. As much as you like old boy... And he cute, and he young, too. He probably be slaying that thing around, you know what I'm saying? Making it do what it do. Honey, let me tell you something. There's a whole bunch of men out there in the world that is worthy of your time and skills and love that you can deal with. We don't need to always put ourselves down and always try to find someone that's a fixer-upper. Houses are fixer-uppers. Cars are fixer uppers. Projects are fixer uppers. Not motherfucking men. That is one thing we ain't about to do is be picking up men that is fixer uppers. Okay? I'm sorry, but for the year of 2017 and beyond, let's not pick any fixer uppers. Okay? Let's motherfucking not. So that little fixer upper right there, I'm I, I I'm probably pretty sure that eventually one day when he's ready he's going to get himself together and he is going to stop using drugs but it's going to take something really traumatic and devastating for him to do so and that happens with every drug addict once you become a crackhead you are a crackhead and you're not going to stop smoking until something drastic happens and that's just unfortunate that's just like we're getting your ass with our nigga all the time and then when something really dramatic happens then your ass leave him the fuck alone or we're drinking it all goes to say when you have a habit and it's a bad habit, you ain't gonna stop it because it's a habit until something dramatic starts and happens. And then you're gonna leave it the fuck alone. Like with me, smoking cigarettes. Oh, nothing drastic happened. I just got tired of the smell, okay? So with me, we're drinking. Like I was drinking every single day. It might've been a glass here and there every day, one or two, I was never getting drunk. But you know what it did? It made me gain weight. It made me gain weight. So what did I do? I stopped because that was my habit, but I had to stop because I gained weight. So it's a habit. 
A habit is not going to stop until something drastic, drastic happens. Uh-huh. I love this dollar lipstick. Like, this is LA Colors matte lipstick. Um, the color that I have on is, I don't even, oh. Uh, going steady. Listen, Ange, run for the motherfucking border. Okay, bitch? Run. Run for that motherfucking border. Because he's not going to change. He's young. He's partying right now. That's what the fuck he's doing. Run for the motherfucking border and leave him alone. You too old for that bullshit. It's time for you to grow up. You ain't got no kids and you ain't got no marriage. And that's, I ain't going to say not having kids is good for you. But what I'm going to say is you don't have no type of commitments with this dude to where it's holding you back. You can take yourself and go about your business. And it's exactly what the fuck I would do. I would go about my motherfucking business. Okay? Biz naive. Biz naive. Deuces to him. So on that note, bitches, I gotta go. Um, but I figured to show you guys these new cool products that I was using here. And what better way to do that is to share them with you guys in this video. Ruby Kisses, they did send me some little samples and lipsticks and stuff, which is cool. So they sent me this Professional New York's Lip Crown. It's like a matte pink, like... Okay, the color is pretty. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was longer than most. I do apologize. Um, stay Diva and Divalicious. I love you guys. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in a future video.